Uh, all right, Senator, uh, I would like for you to break down uh, the whole situation, you know, uh, for Nigerians. Uh, what is really going on? Is it a strictly farmers others clash or are there other um, factors of feeding uh, these incessant attacks, you know, in May, in June, and of course, you know, just recently uh, as, as uh, a few days ago? Uh, who is behind it? What is fueling the killings? I, I know that when you are local government chairman, even when you represented uh, your constituency in the House of Reps, uh, you mm. must have access to uh, information to an extent. So can you break it down uh, if it is strictly farmers' headers clash and if there are reprisal attacks because people are also saying uh, that natives are also killing the yeah. headers uh, which uh, necessitated their returning, you know, for repressor attacks, you know, to carry out their own thing. And secondly, if you don't mind, will you think that what is happening now, particularly since June, um, is a test of strength to the new governor, uh, Mr. Caleb Mufwang, uh, who's just new in the Sadu, but like your good self, is also in the opposition, is a PDP member. How much of synergy do you think mm. that he will be able to get from the ruling APC uh, in making sure that this comes to an end as the president, President Tinubu, desires? Yeah, um, we, we are now a government. We are citizens of Nigeria. Our concentration is how will Nigeria move forward? How will Nigeria develop? What will be the level of progress after four years? I, I don't see us as APC and PDP any longer because whatever services that will be rendered to anyone in Nigeria today is coming from the government of Nigeria, whether you are APC or you are PDP. So I want to see uh, both uh, President Tinubu and uh, Governor Mutfang as leaders that have been saddled with the constitutional uh, uh, authority to take care of uh, the state and also the country, uh, party differences will not exist any longer. Of course, it will be there, but that will be secondary. Secondly, I don't see these killings as farmer header clash. For goodness sake, you don't rear cattle at night. And some of these attacks take place in the night. The farmer header clash that we know used to be just a minor fracas uh, in the daytime when the farmer would be on the farm tilling his farm line and the herder would be there rearing his cattle. And uh, sometimes, of course, you cannot avoid such things. Uh, the cattle may you know, run into a farmland and begin to eat or destroy the crops. Of course, conflict will arise. And they have a very amicable way of settling this and, uh, but what we are seeing now is far from this issue of farmer header clashed. You don't rear cattle at night. It is the cattle that are mobile. The farmland is stationary. And therefore, if there's any sort of destruction, it's going to be the header that must have destroyed the farmland. And if such happen, I know, like I did say, that there are better, better ways of settling this peacefully between the two parties. But what we see now is an attempt to go into what we call land grabbing. Because in Plateau, let me just tell you, more than 60 communities have been ejected from their farmlands and stranger communities are settled there. And the government is aware of this. And it's something that can be investigated by any person. If you go to such communities, you will see that the original settlers of those communities are no longer there. People that are there are people we do not know, and government has done little or nothing about it. What has come to this level is that we have allowed the non state actors to have instruments of coercion more than the state actors. And because they have uh, access to instruments of coercion, they use this at their own will, at their own volition, to render terror on the innocent citizens of Plato and other parts of this country. And for us to solve this problem, of course, 
we have to really, 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 you know, uh, armed the state actors with more sophisticated, more technical, more trained personnel to see how they can handle this thing. But by the time we begin to say, ah, this is a farmer header clash, uh, this is this, no, it doesn't work. But with the recent attacks on the plateau, I see it as uh, politically motivated because these attacks are not provoked by any person. Nobody provoked anyone into going into these attacks. And I believe that no matter the level of provocation that someone would have done to you, there are Eastern laws where you can go to court, you can report the issue to the security agencies. You don't go about killing people, killing innocent people. And if you see the level of killings, very, 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 very disheartening. A pregnant woman, her womb will be opened, the, the baby will be removed, and also slaughtered and put on her chest. It's so, it's so terrible. It's satanic. I see it as a, a, an attempt to grab the lands of the innocent uh, uh, citizens of Plateau and other parts of the country. I see it as politically motivated. I don't want to bring religion into it because uh, I don't think that these people uh, have any religious uh, uh, beliefs because both our religions, uh, of course, will not allow you to go and kill somebody. Uh, the religions have preached peace and therefore these people are satanists. They are people that don't know God in the first place. That's how I look at them. So uh, government should deal with them decisively and uh, drastic action should be taken so that these people don't live. They don't deserve to live.